Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we've been talking earlier this week about if you have a pulse, you have a purpose with Wally Rendell, a wonderful, wonderful pastor, one of the best servant leaders I've ever met. Uh, he and his wife, Barbara, are just wonderful, wonderful servant leaders. And I want to encourage you, if you didn't hear any of those programs, to go back to our website, Hope is Here. Dot today. That's hope is here. Dot today. Uh, you will be encouraged. I don't care if you're 17 or you're 87. Some of the stories that Wally shared through his almost 60 years of ministry, uh, just powerful. I had tears in my eyes of people that fought through pain, heartache, disappointment, that old thorn in the flesh that Paul asked God to remove numerous times, and yet he didn't, and he had to persevere through that thorn in the flesh. Uh, you'll be blessed. So go check out. They're only 14 minutes long. There were three of those messages. Go to the website, Hope is here. Not today. You can catch those podcasts. I also want to encourage you to sign up to listen and get our podcasts automatically sent to you. We're on iTunes. Uh, you can download the Podbean app. Also, we're on YouTube. So lots of ways of Facebook, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, hope is here. That's all you've got to do. Twitter is at Hope is Here, L E X for Lex. Hope is Here, Lex. But I want to talk today. Wally uh, knows what it's like to, to hurt and to lose someone you love. And unfortunately, uh, they lost their precious daughter, Jill. And uh, I just want him to share about that because I've got friends. I know a lot of listeners that have had to bury one of their precious children. And I want you to hear uh, from Wally's heart. As, uh, he, he put together a message because so many people have asked, how did you do it? He called it No Fairy Tale. So I'm going to turn over to Wally Rendell today. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> it's not an easy situation. Uh, life is hard, difficult, pain, bumps in the road, detours. We just live in a fallen world, and we need to understand, I think, Greg, we live in a fallen world, and just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that fallout's not going to touch you. It does. And uh, we're not exempt. <clears throat> the sun, the rain comes on the good and the bad. Hard times can come to Christian people. And, uh, you know, C.S. Lewis said that... <clears throat> uh, that uh, mis mis uh, well, I can't remember exactly what he said. <laughs> but that, uh, that misery is, oh, pain is inevitable, but misery is optional. Mm. Pain is inevitable, but misery is optional. And we're all going to have pain. But how we handle it, mm. and it's not easy with the loss of a child. Uh, I mean, Jill was just so precious. And uh, yeah. talk to us about, about that night when you found out. What, what, yeah. Tell us about it. <clears throat> It is 1.30 in the morning, uh, and a knock came at our door. We were sound asleep. And the Jessamine County Sheriff, along with his deputy, uh, asked if we had a daughter named Jill Marie Rendell. They proceeded to inform us that there had been a van accident, and Jill had lost her life. She was a student at Cincinnati Christian University, was in her senior year, and upon graduation from CCU and Mount St. Joe College, she planned to teach and be a children's minister. She's going to be a, she's going to be, a, you know, pastor, leading. Them. And and I tell you, kids loved her. Greg said so she just had an infectious smile and personality, bright personality, and uh, kids were just drawn to her. The accident happened near Marshall, Michigan on I-95 <clears throat> while she was traveling to Grand Rapids, Michigan for a tournament with the men and women's basketball team. So these were the, they were in vans, they were traveling at night, it was winter, snowing, nighttime, slick roads. The van spun out of control, con uh, catapulting through the air, she was thrown out and pinned under the van. We thank God that the other eight girls walked away with minor scrapes and bruises. Jill was very popular with the student body, staff, and faculty. In fact, on the Friday before this accident occurred, she was voted CCU homecoming queen and honored during halftime. Barbara and I were there and were so proud of that moment, little did we know, Little did we know that <clears throat> uh, on next uh, Thursday, following 
that uh, she would go to heaven. On Thursday afternoon, she loaded into the college van and they headed to the basketball tournament. <clears throat> the accident occurred. The news spread throughout the CCU campus, the tri-state area, and literally around the world. In the wee hours of that morning, when we found out, people rushed to our home, calls, cards, and people. It's amazing. Two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, the word had gotten around throughout Lexington area, and we had people coming to our home. Upon completion of an autopsy uh, on Saturday, the coroner released her body, was flown back to Lexington. It was cared for by the wonderful people at Kerr Brothers Funeral Home. I'll give them a touch because they did such a wonderful job. And on that Sunday, uh, <clears throat> following her death, we didn't go to church. I was pastor at Southern Acres Christian Church, but the church came to us. We had a lot of family and loved ones who had driven in from distant points, and they were all there. So the Southern Acres elders brought church to our home. They read scripture, prayed, shared the Lord's Supper. And uh, at my church at Southern Acres, Barry McCarty, president of Cincinnati Christian University at that time, he preached for me that particular Sunday. And uh, we were just there at home. So uh, this, uh, you know, she passed away on Thursday. Uh, so now on Sunday afternoon, we had visitation at the church. Uh, people came, multitudes of people came, uh, shared their uh, grief. You know, a grief shared is grief diminished. Mm. And so you need to have a time when people can come and they can hug your neck and share with you. Grief shared is grief diminished. And so the... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> the visitation started early afternoon. It lasted for eight hours. And I tell you, it's just amazing, Greg. And so that was on Sunday. Sunday night, early Monday morning, a cold front blew in. Her service was planned for that Monday at the church. But in spite of rain, showers, cold, sleet, people came. The church was filled to overflowing over into the worship center, from the worship center over into the gymnasium. There's so many people they couldn't get in there. And it's an interesting thing that Bob Young, many people told about this, but Bob Young, it was a, a vicious cold front that came through that, mon that Monday and uh, rain and uh, clouds. And, uh, and yet the sun would come out sometimes. And Greg, uh, over the church stood a rainbow and Bob took a picture of it. There was a rainbow that Monday morning. Mm. And uh, we had the memorial service that Monday morning. And there was that rainbow wow. over the church. It was an amazing thing. And at 11 o'clock on Monday, we had the memorial service. The church was filled. We had great music, uh, singing, worship. Some people said that's the greatest worship service that they were ever in in their lives. And Wayne Smith. Uh, we asked Wayne to do the message that morning, and so we had great music, and then the message, and then uh, we journeyed out to Lexington Cemetery, a uh, procession of cars five miles long followed us as the police led us <laughs> out to Lexington Cemetery to Section 50, where she's laid to rest, Glenn Snyder's minister of Crossroads Christian Church at that time, led the committal service. And uh, we laid her body to rest, awaiting the sound of the trumpet. And uh, so for the next two Sundays, I didn't preach. L. Palmer Young, a fellow staff member and a great man of God, filled the pulpit for me and, uh, uh, you know, helped me during that particular time. You know, during following her death and her burial and all of that people I mean, you just can't believe Greg I tell you uh, what happened how many people came and loved on us stood with us and Wayne Smith of course <laughs> he would come knocking at our door knocking at our door maybe it'd be nine o'clock at night this is you know <laughs> I can just you see know, this. I'm telling you it's incredible and he would have in his hand uh, you know bucket bucket of fried chicken 
from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, of course, many, many people can give the same testimony, but he would sit there, and uh, and 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 we would he would start telling stories, and we'd start laughing about things that we had experienced in life, things he had experienced in his ministry, and uh, we would just sit and eat and talk and laugh and weep. And uh, it just kind of lifted the burden, you know, <clears throat> lifted that cloud of, of uh, heartache that we had. Well, and I heard Wayne say one time, Wally, uh, we're going to have another program because I want you to share observations about what you did yeah. in this time because sure. I know you can help a lot of people with what you learned through this really tragic situation. But, you know, Wayne said, you know, you may not know what to say, but just showing up means everything to people, doesn't it? Yes, that is exactly right, and um, that's one of the observations. I, I'll make just a few observations in this pro program and maybe the next program. But uh, your presence speaks volumes. You know, we wonder, should, should I go? We hear there's been a death, there's been a tragedy, there's been a heartache. Should I go? The answer is Y-E-S, if you can go. Church leaders, ministers, missionaries, educators, parachurch directors poured out their love and support. They came. They called uh, on the phone. This was before text messages and all that stuff. And so here the phone would be ringing and it would be somebody maybe, if somebody from, you know, out in California and they couldn't come back, but they were maybe a minister friend. Or somebody had been in our church and they were just calling. I think about one person that came. And uh, he was an elder in our church. Bob is his name. I'm going to give his name. Bob Bourget. In the days that followed, and the hours that followed, and the days that followed, as people would come and hug our necks and be there in our home, Bob would come. And he would just sit in a chair, had a rocking chair. <laughs> he would just sit there. And I'd just look over at him and he'd just be rocking. He never had platitudes to say. He never had some sermon that he wanted to preach. And you know, sometimes people, they worry about, what am I going to say? You don't have to say anything, just your presence. And he would just be there, his presence. And I'll never forget it, you know, Bob. He didn't preach to us. He didn't give us some flowery poem or something. Now this will make everything right. Mm -hmm. He was just there, Greg. And uh, so your, your presence just speaks volumes. All right. If you just tuned in, we're talking with Wally Rendell, and he's sharing about his precious daughter, Jill, who uh, at the age of 21 was in a van wreck. Uh, she was with Cincinnati Christian University's uh, men's and women's basketball team traveling to Michigan, and unfortunately there was an accident, and she uh, lost her life. And so we've been hearing about some of Jill's wonderful, wonderful life. She had just been voted homecoming queen the week before, and yet here's Wally, a pastor, he and his wife Barbara at Southern Acres Christian Church. But he just shared one observation, but I'm going to have him uh, stay with us. I want, to, want him to share more observations about during this time of losing his daughter Jill and what the church was and what people were. And I know so many of us, when this happens, a tragedy, some of you are like, what do we do? What can we do? So I hope that you're going to tune in with us tomorrow as we're going to continue our conversation with Wally Rendell on Hope is Here. Join Sunrise Children's Services Saturday, February 9th for a power-punched evening with boxing great George Foreman to celebrate Sunrise's 150th anniversary. Called Fighting for Hope, this evening is sure to inspire and encourage as George shares his testimony of failures and successes. For more information about Sunrise Children's Services and Fighting for Hope, go online to sunrise.org. That's sunrise.org or call 800-456-1386.